the kid, he finally gets away and he starts running. As he runs, the police get out of his vehicle and he follows behind him shooting. And um, the kid body jerked as if he was hit from behind and he turned around and he puts his hands up like this and the cop continued to fire until he just dropped down to the ground and his face just smacks the concrete. Mm. The search for truth in every instance must be thorough and must be even-handed. If we are indeed sincere about finding out the truth, then we must not fear where it takes us, whom it affects, what it says about anyone, and what it reveals about we as a society. There is no substitute for the truth. It's as simple as that. If you don't agree with that simple statement, then I suggest you leave now. For this attempt to speak the truth will fall without a sound on your deaf ears and without an image on your blind eyes. Don't waste your time, my time, or our time. Michael Brown did not have his hands up when shot by police officer Darren Wilson. He was not surrendering. He was not pleading for his life. And he certainly was not seeking to avoid a confrontation. Despite what you hear and see on various agenda-driven cable networks, local TV news, which rarely, if ever, cover news these days because they're too busy showing off the weathercaster's legs or making sure you tune to their nightly primetime programming with useless feature interviews, what you read on slanted websites or in print publications that are often merely toys for those seeking to forward an agenda. The fact is simple. This did not happen. Forensic evidence is not infallible when standing on its own. A 2009 study by the National Academy of Sciences found those pieces of forensic analysis that worked well and those that still need refinement. DNA analysis is the gold standard in their own words. And the DNA evidence found in the patrol car of Officer Wilson absolutely supports his recitation of the events. Those who disagree with such evidence are merely feeding their own agenda and in the end, lying. Then there is the physical evidence at hand. The testimony and findings of the county medical examiner are crystal clear and perfectly fit Officer Wilson's testimony. The very same results indicate there is no doubt Michael Brown ran towards the officer. His hands were not up. He was not surrendering. He was not pleading for his life. He was the aggressor. And in order to perform his duty as a police officer and stop an aggressor, Darren Wilson acted in line with his training. Had Michael Brown not charged at the officer, he might very well be alive today. Then again, had Michael Brown not committed a strong-arm robbery at a local convenience store earlier in the day, he very likely would also be alive today. And we would not be discussing the lies and conveniently sidetracked pieces of fact that are not told either by those seeking to make this about racism and feed their agenda-driven egos and coffers, or those seeking to push their phony news agenda with breaking news and other such fraud they know you will fall for. No doubt there are those such as Tiffany Mitchell who believe what they saw and will state it time and time again, certain in their conviction there is no other story but theirs. But the human memory is a funny and unstable thing, which is also part of any such truth and search for truth. It's the understanding, realization, and acceptance that people will tell stories to fit a narrative. They will and often do shade the truth with colorful metaphors and what they believe their mind recorded. Sometimes they will remember instances in such a manner that will make them seem completely innocent. His weapon was already drawn when he got out the car. He shot again, and once my friend felt that shot, he turned around and he put his hands in the air, and he started to get down, but the officer still approached with his weapon drawn, and he fired several more shots. Dorian Johnson believes his story, and there have been changes in his story since then, but this is understandable in such cases of fear. But this is where we have to pause. This is where we must, if we are to truly evolve as a society and put race and hate behind us, confront the facts. We must go to the testimony provided by numerous witnesses, those who are not afraid to speak about what really happened, those who have recanted recollections that match not only the DNA evidence but match the physical evidence, findings of the medical examiner, every shred of evidence that exists, say, for issuing a subpoena for the Almighty, whom I believe is not in the habit of giving interviews. The truth is out there. It's easier to find than you might believe. But so are the lies and bubble-headed buffoons playing you for fools. Too harsh? Only to those who follow the likes of Nancy Grace, Don Lemon, Ed Schultz, and the rest who will sell their soul and yours for the chance to submerge you in their bovine excrement and seek to keep alive an agenda that serves their purposes instead of serving the need for truth and real racial equality in America. And that is telling it like it is. Next hour here on Midpoint, the most powerful man in American sports still has plenty of explaining to do. The Christmas spectacular thwarted by UK intelligence and the possibility American airstrikes are getting it right. Are getting it right, I should say. It's right here on Midpoint.